Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, good morning uh, to all my students. And uh, I request you all to be very careful for the next two to three weeks. Very crucial period uh, in our fight against the second wave of the pandemic. I hope most of you have been vaccinated and they are able to take the second dose also. If not, please see that it is done at the earliest. Huh? Things are looking very grim. Hmm? And uh, please don't go out of the house unless it's absolutely essential. Mm, as far as possible, you can uh, wear a double mask, the face shield also. And at all times, you maintain that six to eight feet distance. Maximum needs are uh, some essentials like milk and groceries for us to stay alive. Mm? And those who go out of the house, you please tell them to maintain the COVID appropriate behavior at all times. Hmm? Things have turned very bad. And we all have to be responsible. Don't behave irresponsibly. Huh? Then uh, coming to one thing. Uh, I'm not very happy with the way you have written your uh, answers. Hmm. Good thing is, uh, you all must have taken the exam very sincerely. I'm very happy for that. But uh, uh, I'm not happy with your answers, especially uh, the heterometric regulation of cardiac output. Uh, not very satisfying. Even cardiac cycle, the heart sounds part is not good. And uh, when it comes to the, I have corrected only 15 papers. When it comes to conducting system diagram, that is fine. But the pacemaker potential, after telling so many times, you know, the slow response action potential and uh, the slope there, and we draw the diagram like this. Okay, we draw the slope like this, and then we explain this part. We will label it as four, zero, and three phases. And we tell the HCN channel. Only two or three have written. Oh, depressing, you know, for me to teach you all. Really, seriously. I feel depressed sometimes to teach you all. You all look so intelligent in the class. So much action you will do. And very few have got the desire to improve. Huh? Put in that hard work. Huh? So many times we told that. Out of 15 papers, three or four are written. So depressing, you know. I get dejected sometimes. Why should I spend so much time? My most of the colleges, you know, in uh, I have taken I think 25 classes. They finish the entire CVS chapter in 25 classes. Huh? Why should I take the strain, get sore throat, huh? take extra classes? And I take an extra class on Sunday. When the class is finishing, I see that 60 students are there online. Huh? You have no fear, no sense of responsibility, no shame. Huh? Principal and HOD is taking. None of you will come. Out of 170, one third of the class is there, two thirds are absent. And after taking classes for you, morning and evening, morning and evening, I myself had a very bad sore throat. I'm telling it was uh, COVID, uh, everybody around me are positive. I went in for three days isolation. I got myself tested and it came negative last Friday. I, I really feel, why should I do all this for you all? When there is absolutely no reciprocation from your side. Just you are going through the motions, thinking already wearing that white coat, you all have become doctors. Or you have the bloody excuse of online class, offline class. You are ready with excuses for cancelling the class, not coming to the class, postponing the exams, cancelling the exams. Ready with excuses, all of you, most of you. 
You don't want to put in that extra effort, effort from your side. You have to innovate. You have to adjust. You have to adapt to the situation. What to do? It would have been nice if you all were here. When you all were here, I have seen your performance. I don't know. I really don't know what else I should do. Hmm? Very depressing, you know, when I start correcting the papers. Nothing will be written there. How many times you tell those important points which will help you in future in your clinics? Nothing is written there. You want to even attempt that question, that part of the question. And heterometric regulation, we, any sari japan, it is Frank Starling's law, operation of Frank Starling's law, stroke volume is directly proportional to end diastolic volume, which is determined by venous return, which is determined by so many factors, the pumps there, the thoracic pump, the muscle pump, the cardiac pump, in the cardiac pump, you have visitor go, visa fronto, blood volume, gravity, vino motor tone. How many times I would have told you? Huh? It. Hey, hey. There are doctors and there are doctors. I, I hope you know the difference. At the end of the day, everybody will write for cough the same medicine. Uh, antitussives, antihistamine and antibiotic. But the doctor who is writing, he will not know. He will just be copying something. The other doctor who has the good clinical knowledge, he has the ability to discern that cough can be because of so many things. The medication I am giving can cause problems. Uh, so please, you all, please wake up. Uh, don't fool yourself. Uh, if you are trying to fool the world, it is okay. But don't fool yourselves thinking you are all doing a very good job, very great, uh, you are reading. Eh? I, I had enough of uh, nonsense from you all, most of you. So stop fooling yourself. That you should not go to that level of pretension. Mm -hmm. So please know where you stand and start working hard. It is not uh, some rocket science or anything. Eh? You just have to sit at home and start reading more. Okay. So today we will start with a very different topic in cardiovascular system. This is if you if you if you see the chapter which we are discussing, it is called as cardiovascular system. Yeah. So even though these two are one and the same, cardio, can anybody tell me what do you understand by cardio part there? What does it imply? What is it referring to? Heart. 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 It is heart. Referring to the heart. Yeah. So there is basically you have a heart which is like a pump, which is providing a pressure head to pump the blood round and round the system of tubes. So what is the other part, the vascular part? What do you understand by the blood vascular vessels. Part? It is referring blood to vessels. the blood vessels. Conduit, C-O-N-D-U-I-T-S. In simple words, it is nothing but a system of interconnected tubes. Okay. So, in our uh, first class, we had uh, discussed about the functions of the cardiovascular system. And uh, the most important function is, it is a transport system. It helps to transport the oxygen, nutrients, and other substances, hormones to the various tissues. And it also helps to pick up and transport the waste material from these tissues to the various excretory organs, that is the lungs and the, uh, the, the kidneys. Okay, so the system of tubes there plays a very important role, obviously, right? So, Give me a minute, yeah.
אוקיי, שלום. אוקיי, אז אם אתם זוכרים, ‫בכל המשך הראשון ‫על הקרדיו-אסקלר סיסטם, ‫אני הייתי לכם על הסרקיוט דיאגרם של החד. ‫אתם כל הזמן זוכרים את זה? ‫הסרקיוט דיאגרם של הקרדיו-אסקלר סיסטם. ‫אני הייתי לכם את זה ‫לכם את זה ‫לכם את זה, 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 ‫לכם את זה. Do you remember this diagram? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Can you sir. all just uh, please open the diagram? And you'll remember that in between, yes, we had the blood going to the various uh, organ systems like this. Okay. So the two systems, the pulmonary system, uh, pulmonary circulation, and the systemic circulation, they are arranged in series. But the individual systems, organ systems, like say, the blood flow to the liver. Blood flow to the liver, what can we call it as? Hepatic circulation. We can call it as hepatic circulation. So similarly, the blood flow to the lungs, same one time and day. Pulmonary circulation. The blood flow uh, to the uh, kidneys. Renal circulation. The blood flow to the various abdominal organs. Blood flow to the various abdominal organs. Enteric, enteric blood. Starts with S. Enteric nervous system. Visceral circulation. It is there inside the wall of the intestines. It is called as enteric nervous system. But the blood flow to the various uh, organs like uh, pancreas and uh, large intestine, small intestine. Mm, what is that called? It starts with S. Planknik. Planknik. Yeah, it is called as Planknik circulation. It is called as Planknik circulation. Okay. So all these circulations are parallel to each other. So why it is parallel is this parallel arrangement of the subcirculations in the systemic side, uh, it helps that the pressure blood flows with the same pressure to all these organs. The oxygen concentration nutrient is seen, whatever is delivered. And if needed, we can control the blood flow to one organ and divert it to the other organ. The total output from the heart will be seen. Say, for example, at rest, something happens. You want to say that blood flow to the skin increases. So what you will do, that five liters, what is there, will decrease the blood flow, the body will decrease the blood flow to the splanchnic circulation and divert it to the skin, even during exercise, even though there is a six-fold increase in the cardiac output. Even though there is a six-fold increase in the cardiac output, that entire 30 liters is not getting equally distributed to all the organs in the same percentage as it was being distributed at rest. The 30 liters which is being pumped out in exercise, which is the main organ involved in exercise, is the main tissue there? Skeletal muscles. Yeah, it is the skeletal muscles, is it not? So blood will be flowing more to the skeletal muscles, more to the lungs and heart, and more to the skin also because the temperature regulation has to be done. So when most of this blood is diverted there, it has to be at the cost of some other thing, is it not? So blood flow to the kidneys, blood flow to the splanchnic circulation will, will, will decrease. So the same, it is like doing the budgeting in the house. When your income is fixed at, say, let us say, uh, some uh, 50,000 rupees per month. So you are having some 10,000 for groceries, 10,000 for rent, uh, 10,000 for, uh, for paying some loans, and 10,000 uh, for other things, and 10,000 you are saving. Suddenly, one month something happens and some extra expenses come. Something has to be paid, somebody fell sick. So the same 50,000 is there, what you, you will try to adjust, is it not? The grocery, rent and all, you can't do anything. So savings part, you will decrease and you will divert it to uh, the extra expenditure which has come. Same thing the heart is doing. The same output is there. It cannot go beyond a certain value. Okay, so that whatever is being put out, it is readjusted. 
the cost of one organ another organ will get more blood the, the heart cannot compromise blood flow to brain and the, the blood flow to the uh, brain and heart cannot be compromised okay so kidneys also vital organ but still maybe you can decrease because it is receiving so much uh, blood flow there almost 25% of the cardiac output is going to the kidneys at any, any given point of time okay so like that you understood this concept so how it is done that is done because of the parallel arrangement in the sub circulations okay so that is one thing so um, we will now uh, start our discussion on uh, the vascular system there are two things you need to know here one is you have to understand something called as a, a structure function relationship structure function relationship we can also call this as functional anatomy you can also call this as functional anatomy this is called a structure function relationship or functional anatomy so i think i have mentioned this at some point a very almost self explanatory term each and every organ or cell has got a particular function special function and that special function will help it to perform special structure sorry it is having a special structure and that special structure will help will help it to perform a particular special function yeah now we will uh, look at the vascular system of it. we will look at the vascular system in three parts okay so what are those three parts which we look at the vascular system say uh, I, i i let us you think this as the whole uh, whole heart big uh, to both sides are there at the same right so what has to happen is life should be colorful isn't it what has to happen is from so so from the heart the blood will go okay now you tell me so i have divided the vascular system now into three parts this is the first part this is the second part okay and this is the third part right and i'll make one small modification one more thing i have to add here so who will so this is for the sake of convenience i have not divided the heart into two parts and all that okay so and then i have not drawn the lungs if you just imagine this is that so circulation starts from the systemic circulation will start from the left ventricle and come back to the right atrium now i have divided the system of tubes that is the vascular part into three what are those three parts can anybody what is it 1 2 and 3 arteries capillaries and veins veins and capillaries 
ఏంది అర్జెంట్ ఏంటి మాస్క్ వేసుకున్నాను లేదా చూసుకొని రమ్మన్నాను నాకు చేస్తున్నా ఇంకోసారి వచ్చా వాట్ ఇస్ ఫస్ట్ పార్ట్ వాట్ ఇస్ ద సెకండ్ పార్ట్ వాట్ ఇస్ ద థర్డ్ పార్ట్ యు ఆల్ సెట్ సంథింగ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ సిస్టమిక్ సర్క్యులేషన్ ఐ డివైడెడ్ ఇన్ టు త్రీ పార్ట్స్ ఆర్టీరియల్ పార్ట్ ఇస్ హై ప్రెషర్ సిస్టమ్ ఇట్ కంటైన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్టరీస్ సెకండ్ వన్ ఇస్ ద మైక్రో సర్క్యులేషన్ probably the most important part so surprise surprise we will always think arteries are more important ha huh? micro circulation is the most important part and the third one is the venous side please don't draw these diagrams in your exam you can write for the sake of uh, understanding ha huh? so you have the vascular system especially on the systemic circulation part you can divide it into three the arterial system the micro circulation and the venous system so the arterial system will take blood from the heart from the left ventricle and by a series of tubes which are dividing again and again and again the smaller and smaller branches it ultimately comes and join and breaks down into very small divisions called as capillaries across the capillaries the exchange of uh, material is going to take place then these capillaries will join and form bigger and bigger and bigger tubes finally you have the biggest one in the venous side that is the superior and inferior vena cava which is going to bring the blood back to the heart okay yeah. so the vascular system you can divide it into three arterial system the micro circulation part and the venous system now uh we'll go back to the ఉండవయ్యా నేను పిలుస్తా నో విల్ గో బ్యాక్ టు దిస్ థింగ్ ఓకే ఇఫ్ యూ లుక్ యాట్ ది స్ట్రక్చర్ ఆఫ్ ది బ్లడ్ వెజల్ ది బ్లడ్ సి ఐ ఐ ఎమ్ గెటింగ్ సో ఇరిటేటెడ్ బికాస్ ఈస్ కమింగ్ ఇన్ వెన్ ఐ ఎమ్ నాట్ వెరింగ్ అ మాస్క్ నాట్ వెరింగ్ అ మాస్క్ ఐ ఎమ్ టాకింగ్ ఐ మస్ట్ ఐ మస్ట్ హావ్ విన్ రియలీ ఫుట్ సో మెనీ డ్రాప్లెట్స్ ఆఫ్ సలైవా ఇన్ టు ద ఎయిర్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఫ్లో అండ్ దట్ దే వాంట్స్ టు కమ్ ఇన్ without knocking anyway so if you uh, look at the wall of the blood vessel i think you all know that the wall of the blood vessel there are three layers okay and these three layers depending on which part of the circulation we are talking about and depending on what function that particular part of the circulation has to perform some modifications will be done in this three layers okay so can anybody tell me ini kuda pancha pandavulu entha mandi ani question ha huh? so how many layers are there in the blood vessel three layers cheppala ma tunika intima three layers tunic kante entante it is coat 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 ha ee white coat madre adi kuda coat
sorry about that it was about some some patient who was relative with my pradham eh? who was admitted anyway so right so we were talking about the structure of the vessel wall okay so it is very important that you understand the structure of the vessel wall Uh, uh, and try to correlate it to the function that is being performed right so basically whether it is an artery or a vein or a capillary these three layers are going to be there with some modifications or it may be totally removed shaved off okay so what are those three layers which are there from outside to inside or my favorite is endothelial cell i don't know why i am very fascinated by the endothelial cell so much um, a research going on on the endothelial cell uh, which we'll talk at some time in in our discussion in the cardiovascular system so from outside to inside if you go there are three layers or coats so you have tunica intima innermost is intima middle one is tunica media and outermost is tunica adventitia okay so this order you should not and also if you observe the diagram which i have focused between the first and second layer there is one uh, big layer of definite layer of uh, elastic fibers which is called as internal elastic lamina okay and between the second and third layer also there is another uh, elastic membrane called as external elastic lamina hmm? quickly you take down this diagram quickly if you are having the facility of screenshots also it is okay you quickly take it out spend some time fast don't waste time like you should do in the class tondra ga dekh call i will also try to draw with you hmm? let me see and uh, please remember i am drawing with a mouse ha pentonen adu antanta maatrame hmm i am drawing i am being little more uh, daring and i am drawing with a mouse hmm. yeah i am part of all ajay tam
So I will uh, leave it to you all eh? on a scale of one to 10, how much marks you will give me for the masterpiece which I have drawn with the mouse. I try to make it as colorful as possible. I should be colorful. I think in Somebody called me. Hand raise and I end. And you finished or you are giving marks for me? Finished, sir. Finished. Ah. So, Dikshita, what is the name of Keeping in mind. Sir. Wow. Yes, <laughs> sir. I am sure that doesn't deserve a name. Yeah, maska got to know. Right? Sir. No, sir. Mouse to Adam Saraka. Uh, it's difficult to draw with mouse, sir. I don't know. I don't know whether I should be telling you also. I was somebody called me. I I cut the <laughs> mm, I cut the thing and I typed I am in class. I the aim auto correction. I am in low class and point at the end though. I am on Punado. I immediately told sir it is auto correct. Sorry, yeah. Nine kit ten. Ha? Before it becomes too much, I'll, I'll delete it. Bhavana Siri, roll number 10. Yes, sir. What is the mark? Sir, 9, sir. I think I'll stop asking you all. Huh? Uh, my my thing, this is a 5.5 or maximum 6 out of 10. Hmm? I would equate hmm. 5. Hmm. So then, let's run the diagram. Finished, huh? Okay. So you, you can see that now, now comes the important point. Okay. We can we can look at this uh, structure of the uh, vessel wall uh, and try to see it as uh, uh, what are the components? Basically, the vessel wall is having four components. Anybody? Vessel wall is having four components. What is the first cell starting from inside out will go? Epithelium. Endothelium. So endothelium. Is first component is the endothelial. Endothelium. Second component. What is there between the first and second layer? Elastic fibers. elastic fibers. Second component is elastic fibers. What is the third component? Smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. Smooth muscle fibers. Fibers. Very important. This, this smooth muscle, which is present in the vascular system, it is called as vascular smooth muscle. All of you unmute and tell with me. VSM. Vascular smooth muscle. Vascular smooth muscle. My dear students, please talk in sentences. The smooth muscle which is present in the blood vessels is called as vascular smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is known as vascular smooth muscle. Fast, it should be fast now. One more time. The smooth muscle is known as vascular smooth muscle. Called as vascular smooth muscle. It is one of the most studied visceral smooth muscle. 
smooth muscle which is present in visceral organs is called as visceral smooth muscle and again you have certain subtypes here for example like i already told you the smooth muscle which is present in the blood vessels it is called as vas in the wall of the blood vessels it is called as vascular smooth muscle so similarly with same common sense taking it forward common sense concept or trying to apply the same logic to the tracheobronchial tree what is the smooth muscle present in the tracheobronchial tree called as come on please the word i am looking for starts with b dash smooth muscle bronchial bronchial smooth muscle bronchial bronchial kada bronchial b r o ah yeah bro bronchial smooth muscle okay so bronch bronchial smooth muscle is the smooth muscle which is present in the tracheobronchial tree very important because it is this muscle which will go as uh, a bronchoconstriction and bronchodilatation and that is the one which is causing so much problem in bronchial asthma and also in the current uh, covid-19 pandemic if you see uh, many people uh, after they recover they are having severe cough especially if they are asthmatic from before so it is all got to do with that bronchial smooth muscle anyway so moving on so the smooth muscle the visceral type of smooth muscle which is present in the vascular system it is called as vascular smooth muscle it is very important even under resting conditions it will be in a state of partial contraction and we call that as vascular smooth muscle tone i hope you are writing down this terminology even under resting conditions there will be some amount of contraction partial state of contraction in the vascular smooth muscle that is called as vascular smooth muscle tone yeah what is sympathetic tone what is parasympathetic tone anybody what is sympathetic tone and what is parasympathetic tone so due to the action of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers if the tone increases then it will be sympathetic and if it is suppressed then it, it is not it is not increases i'm just asking you what do you understand by the term sympathetic tone bhavana sympathetic tone would be sir uh, in stress conditions like flight right where muscle activity it is not under stress even under resting conditions some impulses are going via the sympathetic nervous system to the Heart or cardiovascular system that is called as sympathetic tone. Even under resting conditions, some impulses are going via parasympathetic system to the cardiovascular system, mainly heart, because parasympathetic innervation of blood vessels is very little. Okay, so that is called as parasympathetic tone. I hope you are writing down all this. So three things are introduced. even under resting conditions in the vascular smooth muscle there is some amount of contraction what is that called as swati what is that called as swati vascular smooth muscle tone vascular smooth muscle tone excellent chandana what is sympathetic tone even in resting condition some sim uh, sympathetic imp some impulses may uh, enters into the sympathetic system then it is known as sympathetic tone sir yeah. via the sympathetic system to the cardiovascular system that is called as sympathetic tone to the cardiovascular system and uh, nirmala what is parasympathetic tone even in resting condition there are some parasympathetic nerve impulses to the cardiovascular system that is known as parasympathetic tone okay simple question to the heart which tone dominates sympathetic is dominating or parasympathetic parasympathetic is dominating parasympathetic is dominating so you should think of uh, uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic as husband and wife and parasympathetic is dominating so parasympathetic is the wife huh? story of all our lives any anyway, so that was a joke right so then jay uh, palande okay so uh, you have endothelium you have elastic fibers then you have smooth muscle that is the vascular smooth muscle what is the fourth component collagen fibers the fourth component is collagen fibers 
okay so and uh, apart from these four important components you will also have the fibroblasts innervating into the tunica intima nerve fibers innervating and some proteoglycans and other extracellular matrix uh, which can uh, innervate okay so now the next part is very important right so the, okay uh, this is another diagram nice diagram uh, where you can see it's almost they have tried to make it into a 3d diagram right you have uh, he he has stripped off from outside stripped off means peel off like uh, peeling an onion or peeling an orange layer by layer okay onion layer by layer so you have uh, the outer connective tissue then you have elastic membrane then you have smooth muscle then you have internal elastic membrane then you have basement membrane then you have the endothelium okay so nice diagram i feel huh? this is uh, another uh, look at uh, the blood vessels right wall of the blood vessel okay i'll uh, i'll come back to this please remind me uh, about uh, vascular uh, smooth muscle uh, function sometime else uh, okay this diagram is showing you uh, how an artery looks like a transverse section uh, how much of uh, thickness is there in the wall total wall thickness and in this is the middle layer in the tunica media lot of uh, vascular smooth muscle fibers are there okay and this is a capillary so thin it is outer two layers have been stripped off outer two layers and the tunica adventitia has been stripped off and tunica media has been stripped off what only what is remaining is tunica intima so a single layer of endothelial cells uh, resting on a basement membrane huh? that is the only thing that is present here when you come to the vein when you come to the vein if you see it is also having all the three layers tunica intima tunica media tunica adventitia all three are there but the problem is that if you compare it to the artery and see the thickness wall here and the wall thickness here very thin it is in comparison to the artery that you have to tell the vein wall thickness of the vein is very less compared to the wall thickness of it is only one third of the thickness rule of thumb in general that is what we say so that is one thing you have to remember then this diagram is most important okay so this diagram is most important. this diagram shows you uh he has taken the four components on one side endothelial cells elastic fibers smooth muscle cells and collagen fibers and uh, he has also looked at the internal radius okay wall thickness so internal radius is from what is inside leaving the leaving the wall thickness okay so this is the wall thickness this is the internal radius okay so you have the component so he has divided the red what is the red signifying what is the blue signifying red which for part artery is artery blue is for red yeah jansi this red part is the arterial system the blue part is the venous system and this is the capillary mainly the microcircuit yeah so if you see here the if you can remember these values it is well and good but i would like to like you all to concentrate on this part okay so if you see here if you look at the art, uh, aorta and large arteries the four components are there endothelial cell elastic fiber smooth muscle and collagen fiber. but if you compare it with the other parts of the arterial system say medium artery arteriole and precapillary sphincter which component is very high in the aorta and large arteries elastic fibers elastic, elastic fibers are there in more percentage they make up more their content is more so that is why 
complete that sentence anyone can come they are known as elastic i don't tell it's known as elastic they and they they bole to kya hai nimala large artists like your artists your large artists are called as elastic artists any other name for them winters and verses Mm-hmm. In case case case. And when it was your turn to write about trigonometric regulation, we said Targo. Very few have written that. Out of the fifteen, I I have corrected. Anyway, leave it. So why to go into depression? Hmm. So the medium uh, artery, if you see, uh, almost everything is there in 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 the same proportion or percentage. It is endothelium is there, elastic is there, not as much in the aorta and large artery. Smooth muscle is there. Collagenous. When you come to the arterio, thickness is very much. Internal diameter is uh, not that much. The thickness is quite high. It is twenty microns. It is more than the internal diameter. And why it is more? Because the proportion of smooth muscle is very high. Arterioles can constrict so powerfully that the entire lumen may be blocked. and they are the ones which help to regulate blood flow if need be more blood flow they will dilate the vascular smooth muscle will relax they will dilate it is called as vasodilatation if it is if need be they will constrict vasoconstriction and they will uh, the lumen is decreased and blood flow will decrease and uh, how it is to what extent this is decreasing we will learn when we talk about uh, hemodynamics okay so you can see the modification and here also some modifications are right so this aorta and large arteries are called as wind castle vessels whereas the arterioles that is where there is maximum resistance to blood flow anything which is moving will be met with resistance okay literally and figuratively anybody is moving up in his career also will be met with resistance with personal experience i can tell you any anyway. so when blood is moving in the vascular system it is going to be met with resistance when air is moving in the airways in the tracheobronchial tree it is going to be met with resistance okay so all parts of the vascular system will offer some resistance but the maximum resistance to blood flow is seen in the arterioles that is why arterioles are called as resistance vessels arterioles are called as resistance vessels and uh, then you come to the capillary if you will come to the capillary is what is the modification the capillary pala the outer two layers are removed outer outer two layers are removed outer two layers have been stripped off very thin wall this is an ideal arrangement for exchange of material between the blood and the interstitial fluid okay so arterioles are called as resistance vessels because they offer maximum resistance to blood flow whereas capillaries are called as exchange vessels why capillaries are called as exchange vessels because exchange is taking place across the capillary okay then veins the venous part everything is there except that the proportion is very less in comparison to the arterial side and veins are having lot of compliance they can be stretched to a greater degree okay so they can have they have a large capacity to store blood so veins are called as capacitance vessels hematur and veins ne capacitance vessels capacitance vessels what are capillaries called as exchange vessels exchange vessels what are arterioles called as resistance vessels so what are aorta and large arteries called as plastic vessels plastic vessels are wind castle vessels i hope you have written down this in your notebooks okay now i'll uh, give you the option because it is all for the students and by the students and i'll show you three diagrams this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third one which one you would like to draw first one 
I, I will one. will leave out the third one. Whether it is this one or this one. First one. All are for first one. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. अरे रिजल्ट्स हैं ना अच्छा है हाँ जेल का ना काल जी त्रिवेणी और ना तो काल जी Are you done, ma? There is another class. There was some confusion today. Nine to ten class was missed. Doctor Sharwani will be taking a class now up to one o'clock. Have you all finished this diagram? Say something. Raise your hands. Yes. Yes, sir. Good. Little fast. Okay.
sir. Yeah, who is this? Uh, conclude today's class. So today's class was mostly an advice from me as usual, uh, which hopefully you will all wake up. And then we spoke about, we started a discussion on the vascular system. We divided the vascular system into three parts, an arterial part, a, a capillary part, or to be more precise, the microcirculation part and the venous part. And we saw that uh, the blood vessels are having uh, three layers or tunics or coats. From, from inside out, you have an endothelial layer that is tunica intima, tunica media, which is the smooth muscle layer, and tunica adventitia, which is the fibrous or connective tissue layer. And in between the layers, you have an internal and external uh, elastic lamina. So basically, there are four components in the uh, blood vessels. The endothelial cell, the elastic fibers, the collagen or fibrous tissue, and uh, the smooth muscle cell. And depending on the function that particular part has to do, uh, it will it will uh, undergo some modifications. Say for example, uh, in the aorta and large arteries, there is more of elastic fiber, so they are called as elastic arteries or vein vessels, which is a very important uh, thing which. Uh, 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 which we call it as visit or go, which is making the intermittent pumping of the uh, heart into continuous flow. Then you have arterioles are having more of smooth muscle and if this smooth muscle contracts, you have uh, almost uh, obliteration of the lumen and they offer maximum resistance to blood flow and they are the ones which regulate blood flow to the various uh, uh, capillary beds. So they are called as resistance vessels. They function as uh, stop cocks or pinch cocks like valves. And then you have capillaries. Capillaries are very thin walled. Okay? Almost uh, nothing is there except the first layer, a uh, single layer of endothelial cells resting on a basement membrane. It's an ideal uh, structure for exchange of materials between the blood and the interstitial fluid. So the capillary is called, they are called as exchange vessels. Okay? Then you have the veins. Uh, veins are thin walled. All three layers are there, but the thickness is very less compared to the arterial side. And veins have got a great capacity to store blood. At any given point of time, most of the blood is present in the venous system. Around 60% of the blood is in interesting conditions. So the veins, because they have a great capacity to store blood, they are called as capacity. So I'll talk. So, right, I can... Uh, Ask uh, you can go on to the next class. Please read and come for tomorrow's class. Okay, read about uh, Starling's Starling's post.